What's up YouTube, KidMoto22 here. And today I'm gonna tell you guys about my Indy Ridge Crow boots. These are the boots that I've worn all pretty much this whole season. Um, I've put about 5,000 miles on this boot and I really just wanna give you guys kind of a 5,000 mile review of what the boot's been like for me and to tell you what I think about it. So let's get to it. All right, well, here are the Crow boots by Indy Ridge. I'll give you guys a little bit of an overview of what these boots look like, and um, I'll tell you how I feel about them in terms of using these for about 5,000 miles this season. So um, like any tr true motorcycle riding boot, you're gonna have armor in the ankle portion where you can kind of see this bulbous portion that pops out, there's armor in there. Um, you have a rigid toe portion where there's armor in there and also in the heel of the boot where there's armor in here. So those are the most rigid areas of the boots that don't really have um, much flex in them. Other than that, the boot itself is very flexible and easy to move um, when you're wearing it. There is a label on here that indicates that the boot is waterproof, and I would say the waterproofing would go up into um, the lace section that you can see right here, where the tongue and the uh, the tongue and the lace meets. There's uh, some nice padding that you can see on the inside of the boot um, around your ankle, and that really allows um, for some extra comfort in the top of the ankle portion of this boot, which is really nice if you're gonna be wearing it long term. I found these boots to be not too hot or too cold when riding. They do actually give me a little bit of a protection from the heat on my motorcycle if you're riding for a long period of time. You can see, uh, you know, just to prove that I did, um, uh, you know, use these for riding. I didn't clean the boot before I brought it and, and showed it on the video so that you can see there's some bug guts and various things, road grime and stuff on the boot. Um, the boot on the bottom, the sole of the boot is a uh, non-sticky compound. Um, it's not real slick. I would say it would be a little bit slippery um, if you had like a, a freshly wet road where you get kind of that oil on there. But for the most part, I found this boot to be um, just fine in terms of the grip that you'd get on the road. Now there is no heel on the boot and the back part, the boot itself on the bottom is flat which I ride um, my bike with floorboards, and so having a completely flat boot has been really nice. The design is so that they can be laced and tied behind the tongue, and hopefully you can kind of see where that's at, tied behind the tongue, uh, that's how I have it tied there. Um, the laces themselves, um, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven eyelets, um, I think, which is pretty pretty normal for this size of boot. Um, it's just above the ankle is kind of where the, the distance on the boot comes to. It's an all leather boot um, all the way around. All the material is leather other than the rubber compound made of the sole. There is a handy tag in the back and it has the Indy Ridge logo on there. Um, actually where it says live free is what is what you're gonna see on this back portion right here, which is one of uh, Indy Ridge's slogans. And the boot itself, again, is all leather. The crow design is meant to be um, a little bit weathered looking. It's not a black patent leather boot, um, so it is a little bit weathered looking. Um, so it's going to wear to your, you know, kind of your riding style. I can show you on my left boot, and hopefully you can see this okay. There is a little bit of wear mark that you can see in the top of the boot. Um, I have some knurling on my shifter and you can kind of see there's a pr pretty big difference between here on this side of the boot and where um, my shifter is at. Now again this is just kind of in my opinion normal wear and tear of the boot. This isn't scraping or scuffing the boot at all. It's just wear from that shifter which I kind of dig. I like um, how boots wear and break into your style um, whether you're using your boot for riding, camping, whatever you're using it for. But you can kind of see um, through 5,000 miles these have worn really good. 
the soles look great for 5,000 miles of riding. <clears throat> now, um, whether or not a person were to wear these boots all day long, I think would be personal preference. I myself, um, don't typically wear them any other time than on the bike, but I have worn them for an entire day. Um, I've, I've ridden them in a number of occasions. Um, I have ridden them in light rain, which my feet didn't get wet at all. Not really a torrential downpour or anything like that or a long soaking, but I did wear them in light rain. They were no problem at all. Um, I've worn them in very hot weather, um, well past 90 degrees, and in cooler weather, um, down to 40 degrees, and they seem to keep my feet very regulated in terms of temperature, so that really wasn't an issue for me. Um, but again, um, they have that worn, worn look, so they're going to be, you know, kind of wear to your, your style. You can kind of see there's some scuff marks on these boots a little bit. Um, there's one here on my ankle um, and, and a little bit on the toes. But again, I would consider this very normal wear and tear for a boot. Um, wearing the boots for um, like a, say a 12 or 13 hour day on the bike, including getting off the bike, setting up camp, that kind of stuff, I found it to be a very comfortable boot to wear long term. I even um, wore it to a couple of events where I knew I was going to be off my bike and on my feet. And again, these wore great in those kind of condition too. So I would say um, for myself, I don't typically wear my motorcycle boots other than when I know I'm going to be riding, but you could wear them in other other situations other, other than when you're riding. As far as the styling goes, um, I really like the styling of this boot. I think that it, it gives you a lot of options. It doesn't necessarily look like her traditional motorcycle boot. It doesn't look like a cowboy boot, but it does offer all that armoring protection that you would expect to see in a riding boot. I myself have really um, come to enjoy the stiffness in the toe of the boot. Um, if you've ridden a bike in traffic a lot or you have like a, a lot of um, shifting that you're doing over a long-term long riding day, I found that the top of my foot can get a little bit sore from um, from my shifter and having that a little bit more of a stiffer toe has really kept that from being uh, a problem for me. But yeah, um, these boots have been great. I would say in terms of the gear that I bought for my uh, 2021 riding season, um, these Indy Ridge Crow boots have been some of the best pieces of gear that I've used this season. Um, I have, I really have Nothing um, bad to say about the boot. Um, it, it has been a great boot to wear and it's worn really, really well. The other thing of, of, uh, of note is you can kind of see when I showed the wear of the boot, um, where my shifter's at, it also puts the laces up further so your laces aren't being worn out by shifting on your bike. So I have had, um, I did have another pair of boots where the laces came down further towards the toe and uh, the knurling on my shifter just wore those laces right out and cut them up. And so it, it really did not uh, work for me in terms of how that is. So that design, thinking about that in terms of a laced boot, having it being laced up further away from the toe is definitely another design feature that I like. I wouldn't say um, for me that I have any complaints with these boots at all. I think these have been uh, great boots and they did exactly what I wanted them to do as far as a, a very traditional riding boot is concerned. Um, the other thing is, is the price on these boots. I think these prices are very fair. I want to say these were around the $170 mark and for what I would consider to be a higher premium level boot, um, these definitely fit that mark great. Um, they're a good price point and these boots are going to be something that are going to wear for me for many seasons to come. And so no complaints as far as um, the price point. As far as the fitment goes, that was an interesting thing. So I'm typically between a 10 and a half and 11. And in a lot of boots, I end up being an 11. Um, I would say that these boots are definitely going to be a little bit more roomy in the toe section and this, you know, top kind of arch of your foot. And so um, I did get an 11 to start with and the 11 was um, was too large. And so I did go with the 10 and a half. And so you can kind of see the 10 and a half size up in there. Um, I did go with the 10 and a half um, after I thought the 11s were too large. 10 and a half is a perfectly fitting boot. So I would say they run maybe a little bit on the large size. So if you are, say, a true uh, 11 and a half, the 11 is going to be good. 
you know, that kind of thing. So, or if you're the kind of person that always wears thicker socks with your boots, I would, I would buy true to size, but I'm between a 10 and a half and 11, depending on the kind of boot. And these definitely, the 10 and a half are definitely a good size for me, um, as, as term, in terms of size of the boot. So there you go. The India Ridge Crow boot. Um, I can't give enough good recommendations. 5,000 miles on these things, and I think they held up great, and they will be ready for a full riding season next season. Well, there you go. I hope you like my review of my Crow boots by India Ridge. These things have really been a great addition to my gear for this season, and really something that I would recommend anybody go out there and take a look at. If you're in the market, for a new pair of boots. I would call these a high-end boot at a, a medium price. I don't think that these are um, priced quite as high as they probably could be for what you're getting out of this style of boot. I really like them. They've done a great job for me. They've worn exactly the way that I anticipated them to. And um, they really have a good style that fits kind of across multiple ranges depending on how you ride, what kind of bike you have, that kind of stuff, if any of that matters. And they've really lived up to what they say um, in terms of uh, what it says in the, in the description of the boot and what you get when you actually get the boot. So there you go. The Crow Boots by Indie Ridge are everything that I'd hope they'd be and probably a little bit more. So that's all I have for you guys today. Uh, I'll put a link to another video of mine you might like over here or over here. And again, if you like what I'm doing, give me a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, let people know um, that uh, you like my content, and that's all I have for you guys. This is Kid Moto. I'm out.